This world has been sundered by a tide of arcane energy. The winds of magic turned into a maelstrom. The Tome of Fate drew me north to find out why. It guided me to a distant fortress steeped in blood. A battle was fought there. Though long over, the spirit still lingered. In the shadow of a broken portal, the trail ended. It was here the tome conversed with the dead. They told of Urson, the bear god of Kislev, lost in darkness. A noble prince ventured to save him, yet he strayed from the path and was corrupted by chaos. Savior became executioner. A single shot, bound in faith forsaken, pierced Urson's heart. And so the bear god roared. The tide that broke the world. Spirits, where lies Urson now? Is he here? In the north. Beyond the maelstrom, in the realm of chaos, on the forge of souls. Is he alive? Wounded and dying, embraces its shadow. What shadow? A demon's? A master of the dark. <laughs> oh. I knew who shackled the bear. Bellacor. Only a fool would challenge Bellacor. And yet, the power of a dying god, there is no greater prize. A mere drop of Urson's blood would break my curse. Ending my servitude to this accursed book. Free to profit from its secrets. But Urson is locked in the Forge of Souls, deep in the realm of chaos. And I cannot enter this nightmarish domain. All routes have been sealed by the Maelstrom. There must be a way. Ah. <gasps> The tome unveils a spell to summon a portal, one to bypass the maelstrom and create a door into chaos. Knowledge to bargain, for I need an ally, one who is tempted by the power of the god bear and can withstand the horrors within. And welcome everyone, Lahart here, and today we begin part one of my new Kislev campaign with the Ice Queen herself, Zarina Katarin. Big thanks to Creative Assembly for giving me early access so that I can start this Let's Play early for you guys. I'll be releasing this series every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday going forward, so make sure you subscribe and ring that bell notification so you don't miss any of the uploads of this campaign. Also, if you want to support the channel and get an amazing deal on Warhammer 3, then check out the link to Games Planet in the description and use code DEMONS at the checkout to save a total of 19% off the game also includes the Ogre Kingdom's pre-order bonus for free. Offer ends on the 20th of March. So let's dive into this Kislev campaign. Kislev's unique faction mechanics include the Motherland, Atomans, and the powerful training of the Ice Court. I command ice and snow. I'll be playing as Zarina Katarin, the Ice Queen of Kislev, known as one of the most powerful Ice Witches to have ever lived. Her faction effects are Devotion Generation plus 10 from successful Frostmaiden hero actions, plus six control, plus three recruit rank for Frost Maidens, and Ice Court training duration, minus two. Her Lord effects provide minus six corruption local province, minus 50% upkeep for Ice Guard units Lord's army, and minus 50% base miscast chance. I'm playing this campaign on very hard, very hard difficulty. As always, your tips, tactics, and advice are greatly appreciated. Uh, feel free to pop them in the comment section, as well as any unit name suggestions you may have. I'll add them in once we get to a full 20 stack army. Now, this is an early access build of the game. While it is fairly representative of the final game, there might still be some bugs and optimization issues. However, these will be worked on for the final release on the 17th of February. But without further ado, let's dive on in and begin our Kislev campaign. A 
A nation in mourning. False news has arrived before me. They believe Ursun is already dead. My proposition will require a delicate touch. I speak the truth! Your god is not dead! He lies in the realm of chaos, a captive of the Shadow Lord. It is no lie. For one drop of Ursan's blood, I can help you save him. Choose your last words wisely, old man. Through your bloodline, you and the bear are one. See past your grief. Search your heart. Her son is alive. He speaks the truth. He speaks the truth. Silence! We have lost what is most precious. Many say I am at fault, that I no longer have the right to sit on this throne. So I stand. I stand with my people, all of you. And if it comes to it, I shall die with my people. We have been blinded by grief. Ursun lives, and while he fights to draw breath, we fight for him! For Orson! For Kislev! For Orson! For Kislev! Kislev marches north into hell. Our goal is to rescue Orson, the god bear of Kislev from the clutches of Bellacor. After fraught bargaining, my price is agreed, and I will do all I can to guide the Kislevites to their lost god. Come then, before I change my mind and cast you into the ice. Advise me. Your Highness, there are enemies close by that threaten your throne. If we are to save Urson, they must be dealt with first. The Maelstrom has forced Northmen, worshippers of the Dark Powers, into Kislev lands. They have taken Gerslev. Slay the trespassers. These incursions and the endless winter have sown doubt in the subjects of your burgeoning reign. Followers of the Great Orthodoxy resent your rule. Pacify such malcontents through diplomatic means or martial might. Kostaltin, the supreme patriarch of Urson's cult, is the instigator of this rebellious feeling. He must be dealt with. If left to fester, it shall cause a schism from which Kislev will never recover. Fortunately, there are allies to be found on our borders, to the west and south. Foster alliances with the Empire and those Kislevite tribes who have always been loyal to your bloodline. There is much to do, your highness, if the motherland is to be secured and your god saved. Let us begin. How they play. The Ice Court. Motherland. Kislev factions gain the devotion of their people through various actions like fighting chaos and the construction of religious buildings. Devotion is used to perform invocations of the motherland related to one of multiple Kislev gods. The Ice Court. Powerful Frost Maiden heroes and Ice Witch Lords are trained in the Ice Court before they can be recruited. Their training will take time and the choices made during the process will influence the character's traits. Atamans. The rulers of Kislev may appoint Atamans to govern over provinces that they control. Ataman provides bonuses to the territory they oversee. Trespassers defile the motherland within sight of your capital's walls. Act quickly and cleanse the nation of these intruders. Thank you, advisor. Got our first mission issued. Engage the enemy. Defeat an army belonging to the following faction in battle, the Vanna Heimlings. Gain a thousand gold to our treasury, plus ten devotion, and we'll get a hero, a frost maiden of the Law of Tempest. 
So we'll go attack them in a moment, have our first battle. Before we do, though, we're just going to go up to the Motherland tab up here because we want to pop an invocation to Tor because uh, we'll generate two supporters when fighting a battle. And seeing as that's what we're about to do, makes sense to go for that one first. Uh, we'll also unlock the army ability Wrath of the Bear all armies and give us uh, plus 5% melee attack for all armies as well. Last 10 turns, there's also... Uh, three others. There's four in total invocations. There's Daza here, which gives us one supporter generated when constructing a building, plus 15% income to trade, and income from all buildings, plus 8%. Uh, Salyak gives us one support generated when gaining a character rank, plus 20 growth, and plus 8% casualty replenishment rate all armies. And finally, Urson gives us five supporters, supporters generated when occupying a settlement, causes attrition to enemy armies within your territory, and gives us the army ability, the Bitterness of Winter, or armies. Uh, we're going to do Tor for now, though, but we will check out all the others across the course of the campaign. They've all got their various sort of strengths or, you know, best situations to use them in. Uh, so we'll be going through all of them in due course. So invoke Tor. Gone icy. There we go. So we have dropped in our devotion because it cost 88. Just coming back here briefly to go through the supporters tab. This is very similar to the Priam's favor uh, that we saw in Total War Saga Troy between Hector and Paris, basically vying for Priam's favor to then eventually confederate with the other one. Same thing happens here between the Ice Court and the Great Orthodoxy, which is led by Costaltin. Uh, as you gain supporters, you get various buffs and bonuses at uh, different stages of your supporter's influence as it goes through. And then finally, whoever gets to 600, or as the player rather, you'll confederate with your political opponent. Don't know what happens if Costalton gets there. I don't know if there's penalties or what. Um, but yeah, obviously we'll want to try and beat him to that. Maybe it just locks it out and you're never able to do it if, if he beats you to it. But yeah, get to 600 supporters and we'll get to confederate with him. Diplomatic relations plus 100 with Kislev. Control plus 6 all provinces. Plus 9 leadership all armies. And plus 6% speed. Uh, you can use coin or devotion to lower the number of supporters of the Great Orthodoxy as you go through. So we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but don't need to worry about that just yet. Let's send Tsarina Katarin to slay some Norskins. In we go. Lovely. It's close victory. But obviously we always fight these first ones just so we can check out our units and uh, have a good old look through them. We've got two units of armoured Cossars, great weapons, a unit of armoured Cossars, two units of Ice Guard with swords, winged lancers, and a snow leopard. They've got, obviously, their Marauder Chieftain, two Marauders, Marauder Hunters, and some Norsegan Warhands. Let's dive on in and shatter them. Show them the fury of the Ice Court. We go. If you want to leave unit name suggestions for this campaign, drop them here on part one. This is the only place where I'll be looking for them. So don't post them on part two, three, and four when they come out. Just come back here to part one and post them when we get uh, Zarina Katarin's army to a full 20 sack. That's when I'll add in the first round of your suggestions. Uh, risk the winds of magic. Yeah, I'm feeling lucky today. Let's do it. Channel some magic. Okay, well, it didn't drop. We've channeled them, but yeah, it didn't drop. That That's fine. <laughs> okay, 10's more than enough. Let's set everybody up and then we'll take a look at these units before we dive into the battle. I'm going to go for the two armored Cossars over here. They're also, uh, they've got pistols, basically, the Cossars. Include on the great weapon variant, the great mace is there. Got the snow leopard there. I think we'll have the ice guard with swords over here. And the wing lancers... Uh, it's a Norskin Warhounds. I think we'll have them over in the forest here and have them flank on out and take out the Marauder Hunters. Probably just shoot the uh, Norskin Warhounds down with the Ice Guard. Let's have the Tsarina out in front. And we can use her Ice Sheet spell to slow them all down as they advance. So let's have a quick little look at our force here. There she is. The Ice Queen. Tsarina Katarin. Take a look at her skill tree once we finish this battle. So here are the armored Cossars with great weapons. Obviously, they've got their pistols out at the moment, but they have these great maces they'll switch to. So we'll fire off a volley or two and then get them to charge the enemy while they're slowed. Them in front. And we've got our, our snow leopard. Have a good pat. Good Kato. And then we've just got the regular armored Cossars here, which are pistols. And Axe Infantry. They've obviously got the shields. Love the sigils on the shields here. Obviously the Kislev ones. The red ones in there as well. 
looking awesome. And then behind, we've got the devastating ice guard. These are the sword variant. You can also get a glaive, uh, glaive variant, but these are dual sword melee infantry hybrid unit when they switch from their bows. And on the back here, just quickly show their stats. So they inflict frostbite on both their missile and their melee. And magical attacks on, on both as well. Hybrid unit, anti-infantry frostbite. The Motherland's finest. Armor piercing, uh, special range weapon. Is a pistol really a special range weapon? <laughs> um, snow leopard there, anti-large. So that'd be quite useful later on. Defenders of Kislev. There's uh, Katrin there. So very low armor. She will be squishy. So we don't want her facing off against the Marauder Chieftain directly. Use her spells to support the army. Throw her in against some of the units in the flank because her attack animations are pretty awesome um what's she got her there by our blood unbreakable uh, leadership is wavering or lower oh, nice that's pretty useful and then finally the winged lancers armed and shielded and if you nearly forgot about these guys <laughs> very lionheart to forget about the cavalry mustache game is on point though look at these right lionheart they're shock cavalry so don't leave them fully engaged for too long otherwise You'll wonder why they've been deleted. Right. Let battle begin. So we'll probably try and pop this ice sheet to slow down the enemy as they advance when they get a little bit closer. The ice guard can fire really decent range there. What actually is it? 160. Yeah. These guys have got 90 on their pistols. We'll try and bring down those Norsecan Warhounds over on the right. And slow down the Marauders with the other one. But they're all going to be firing. We've also got the Ice Maiden's Kiss. Try and knock them back with that a little bit. That costs six, and that one's four. Wait for them to get a little bit closer. I want to pop my cavalry out just yet. In a minute, Ice Guard are going to start firing. Right, now I want to do it. Uh, I'm probably going to have to miss that unit there so I can catch the Warhounds in this. But let's knock these guys back there. Bring the cavalry out. Pull her back behind the lines. Focus on the warhounds if you can. But I'll actually bring the warhounds over to my cavalry. Okay, what we'll do is we'll pop Wrath of the Bear. And get him to charge them. Focus on the Marauder Hunters. He's able to come right through there. He's going to try and take her out. Skate away. What we'll do. Slow them all down here. Bada bing, bada boom. Those Norse Gun Warhounds are deleted. Try and target the Lord with the Ice Guard there. Rest of them are all shattered. Snow Leopard, knock him back. Bring the Lancers in here. Nice! Good, Kato. Oh, that's a cracking charge. Who knew? Cavalry, super effective. Bring him down, Ice Guard. If Zarina can get the final hit. I love that animation where she goes up on her, her iceberg. I don't know. What do you call it? Just her ice plinth. There we go. She's finished him off. Fires out some darts. Very nice. And check out more of her battle animations in the next one. Only lost 31. 
Not surprised. Uh, straightforward first battle. I feel like all of the ones in Warhammer 3, the first ones, are a lot easier, even at higher difficulties, compared to Warhammer 2. 116 kills with the uh, wing lancers there. Good job, guys. We gained some devotion. We've gained some supporters as well. This we should have done. We gained. And we've gained a rank as well. We'll go through our skill tree in a sec. So we can go sacrifice captives for more devotion if we want to. We can pardon captives. We can take some replenishment, which I think is what I'm going to do because then we'll be pretty much nearly at full strength. Let's do that right now. They will serve the motherland. Down they go. Good stuff. Mission successful. 1,000 gold. 10 devotion. And we've got a frost maiden over there. A potent ally has joined your ranks. Embed them in your army. Your Highness, a victory so close to the capital strengthens your rule. But the Marauder threat remains. Recruit more warriors to your banner while you are in friendly territory. Okie dokie. That's the plan before we push over towards their settlement over here. There's Lev. We spend a turn recruiting and then push towards them. Group two more units. 500 treasury and plus 10 devotion. Lovely. Let's just see. Did we get those supporters? We did. Lovely. Uh, when you fight a battle. I wonder if that counts when you fight a siege battle as well. Because obviously you get five when occupying a settlement there. I wonder if... If that's the case, it probably would have been better to get that one to get more supporters early on. See if we have more battles over time with that. Frost Maiden. Right, let's bring our Frost Maiden into our army. I'll obtain exquisite and tactics. this might just be a temporary placeholder name for now, but I feel like we can't do this series without an Elsa. Uh, let's do Elsa of Arendelle. There we go. Just, just got to let it go, you know? Right. Catarin. Let's take a question. look at those skills. We're going to pop the first point into Root March, though. We always want that extra campaign map movement range. But going through your spells there. Ice Maiden's Kiss, Frost Shield, Frost uh, Ice Sheet, Frost Blades, Death Frost, Evasion, Crystal Sanctuary, Heart of Winter. Looking forward to seeing how powerful that is because I remember when I played the preview Battle of the Brass Keep nearly a year ago. Uh, I'm pretty sure they said they'd made magic way more powerful in that build of the game. And Heart of Winter absolutely annihilated the forces of Corn. So we'll be nice to see what that's like. Uh, Earthing, Magic Reserves, yeah, Arcane Conduit. Fairly standard. Guardian's cool. Can summon a Snow Leopard. Oh, nice. That's pretty good. And she can buff them as well. We go along the top bit here, which unlocks at rank 12. It's a magic reduction. Hit points, a little bit of armor in there. Indomitable Spirit. Melee Defense for Ice Guard units. Yeah, Frost Affinity. Khan Queen. Devotion generated two per turn. Diplomatic Relations plus 10 with Kislev. Plus one control. Field of Ice. 8% ward save. That's nice. Very nice. Right. She's also got a War Bear or a War Horse mount. I don't think we'll bother with the War Horse at all. War Bear will probably unlock it, but I quite like seeing her animations skating around on the ice. So maybe we'll try it, but I think we might just stick to her on foot. She's also got some quests. She's got the Frost Fang, which unlocks at rank 7, and the Crystal Cloak, which unlocks at rank 10. We'll be looking to pursue those when they've unlocked as well. Uh, Frost Maiden, Elsa, um, Tempest here, Hailstorm, Freezing Winds, Gust of True Flight, Swift Wing, Biting Wind, Evasion, Blizzard. Hello. That's cool. Hawks of Miska. Another Vorta. Is that for explosions? Does not affect friendly troops? Oh, cool. I was wondering if that was like a, a Vortex on just flying units or something like that. No, that's pretty cool though. You can also get a War Bear and also summons a Snow Leopard. Nice. Right. Let's see if we can just move a little bit closer. To the bridge there, to the edge of our territory. Go into encamp stance and then we can recruit. We'll go for. We're going to get Cossars or Cossars with spears. Um, These guys are bow and axe infantry. These guys are missile and spear infantry. I think I'm going to go for the spear variant for now. I won't recruit any more because we want to push on Gerslev in the next turn or so. Building upgrade available. Kislev. 
of course. It's a single region province, so we can pop in a commandment as well, I think. For the moment, income from all buildings, recruitment cost. That's not going to help us out just yet because we're not going to stay here too long. Uh, purge step. Let's go for that because our control is a little bit low. Go for that one right now. Uh, we'll upgrade the Kossar hut. Kind of have to, unfortunately. Build that one here because there's no minor settlements in this region. Just wondering if there's anything else that would let us get. Same stuff later on. Kislev does get four landmark buildings, which all cost uh, coin, gold, and devotion. Bok Palace, Grand Citadel, Temple of Urson, and the Imperial Embassy, which uh, gives you more allegiance points uh, for alliances with the Empire. So we'll probably try and set some outposts there, recruit some of their units, and stay friendly with them to the south. Could hopefully help us out in the campaign. Um, what have we got here? That is growth, upkeep for elemental bear, and war bear riders. Also gives us some more fur because we've actually got a fur building here. So we can get a lot of fur produced from here. Not that surprising. Control, devotion gain as well. Control faction wide. Income from all buildings, local province. You can earn quite a tasty amount uh, from Kislev. Upkeep for Ice Guard units, Boca Palace. That also unlocks recruitment of the Ice Guard as well. You get Zar Guard at tier 3, Ice Guard at tier 4. Normally, Ice Guard are tier 4 and 5. So that's we won't need that Ice Training Fields and Covenant of Ice here. We'll go for the Boca Palace line. Right, let's go for Hunting Camp for now. Let's upgrade that so we can get more Kossars, Armoured Kossars. And then we want some more growth here. Uh, we could go for the Tallow Keepers Guild for growth and construction cost reduction or the tribal encampment for recruitment cost reduction and growth. I think we'll probably keep on doing some building. So let's go for the Tallow Keepers Guild. There's also stalls for income and the orthodoxy uh, oubliette, which will give us some supports generated. So when we can get one of those in as well, that'll be quite useful. Just tick on over. I don't know if we'll want to have that Kislev, but it will be useful. I guess. It depends how much Kostaltin starts trying to uh, beat us with these, the race for supporters. The Merchant's Guild Hall can earn us quite a pretty penny, though, which is nice and also gives us a trade buff and income from markets overall. So that's uh, faction-wide. That's uh, markets you get from uh, minor settlements. And also the hunting camp gives the bonus to farms, which is also an income earner from minor settlements. We'll check them out in a bit. We can do some research. Let's go through these. So we've got some gen sort of general ones over here, the land on the left. Then you've got sort of dedicated technologies under each of the kind of main provincial capitals in Kislev, Kislev, Erengrad, and Prague. Uh, you've got ice, ice core unlocks in each of them. Increases capacity of uh, Frost Maidens and Ice Witch Lords. Got uh, buff for our Snow Leopards there. More replenishment. Pirates Weapons. Kossars Lens Crafters. Glacial Prism, Winds of Magic, when increasing and improved lookouts. We are going to start off, though, going for the land, going for cold storage, because more growth is always good and better to get that earlier on. Otherwise, it's not going to be that helpful. I mean, plus five isn't a huge amount, but better to get it sooner rather than later. Your and we'll probably get replenishment as well. Right. So we can do there. Let's just go to diplomacy, see if we can get some trade agreements. The and then we'll end our first turn. So, so Ostermark, they are friendly. Let's get one there. Only Sigma's God, Ulrich, can judge you can get a little bit of money out of them as well, but I don't think I'll bother. Just keep it so that our relations improve a bit more. Pose that offer. In fact, actually, we could try and get military access. How much would they want for that? Ooh, okay, yeah, no. Not right now. Agreed. Highborn son. Brotherhood of the Bear. Leave now if you we can also get military access highways, with them. Please. Pop that in there. How much money are they willing to offer us? 196. Eh, it's not much, but I'll I'll, I'll take that. Well, We're getting a little bit of a buff. They're all the way up over here, but yeah, might as well have military access with them. Or uh, with the Bessonling and Clan Gritus. Okay. And look to do Sister confederations with quite a few of, of these ice. as well. So good to get a. Uh, you are humbly Positive start relations-wise with them. That's not worth it. We'll leave that one there. We can't do military access. But it's cool. Right. Propose offer. The ice court. There we go. I think that was all of them, wasn't it? There's Oslin down here. 
But I would imagine to get that balance, they'll want a lot of money. Yeah, no way. No way I'm threatening you either right now. What about non-aggression? Sterland will take non-aggression. So let's just throw that at them. Make your offer as you say, sir. Sir? How dare you? Uh, if I didn't want to secure the south, there'd be trouble. Right, that's all we can do there. Who calls? Nothing else Lord available. Of all. Just yet. Your will. So actually, hang on, just seeing how many people we're at war with to start with. Vanaheimlings, okay. Bessonling, Clan Molder, Legion of Chaos. Are at war. <laughs> we're at war with the demon. The imprints. Oh, and yeah, his name is different every single time. That's pretty cool. It would be almost nice if he could come up again and be like, oh, look, it's Tim. Keysley. Ropesman clan. Yeah, we need to deal with them to the north. Right, let's end our first turn. The ice queen never fails. Mission successful. Thank you. Gazlef is under the yoke of the marauders. You already have a victory against this tribe. We take the town and wipe out the defilers once and for all. Perfect. That was the plan. 1,500 gold to our treasury plus 20 devotion. Nice. Well, it looks like if you have enough devotion, I don't think it locks out the other ones. So you, if you had enough devotion, you could switch between the other ones, which is pretty, pretty cool. Well, he's also got two. Ice Queen of oh, wow. I can... Ah, oh, I can't reach at this turn. No. Um, we won't be able to recruit anything in a single turn, so there's no point going in a camp stance. Go, with Go here. Pride. Oh, we could channel, actually. Yeah, channel the winds of magic, so we've got higher power reserve, actually. Let's do that, and we'll move a bit closer. They are starting to recruit some more units, so we want to get in there. Because I think they've only got what, six in there at the moment, the garrison. Should be able to have more troops are way better than theirs. Plus, we've got two spellcasters. I don't know how effective that's going to be long term. We'll probably want to move Elsa into another army. Or maybe use her on the campaign map. But we'll check her out in this battle. Uh, for now, devotion is low. There is a sm oh, there's a small chance of a chaos incursion appearing in your land soon. Oh, didn't know that. Ah, right. Right, right, right. So you've got to be careful about spending it all. Otherwise, chaos incursions. I mean, Kislev should have a reasonable garrison. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Right. Any new diplomacy options? Anyone warming up to the ice court? Don't warm up too much, though, because then we'll melt. Yeah, that's all done. Right. Blast through another turn. Trust built between diplomatic parties opens the door to further cooperation. A trade agreement may be possible with your foreign partners. Let your merchants flourish, for industry drives war. Yeah, I've already done those, mate. You're a bit late on that mission. That's fine. I'm sure we can... Uh... Yes. Get one with Osland or Sterling, perhaps. So they should be improving because yeah, that should increase the chance of getting one with them because we've got that non-aggression with them. Uh, Costalton. Kneel to Orson. Yeah. What if he'll declare war on us, or whether he'll just? I imagine, I imagine probably holds off declaring war on you just so they can do their own thing building up because they probably just do the race for supporters. We'll see. Right, we'll go in there. Before we do, though, let's do some more building. More fur resources. Let's get that one. Get both of them going in right now, so that's fine. How much longer? We need two population surplus. There's nothing we get here for more growth, is there? New. Fine. We're up to 70. I don't think we get any buffs as uh, Kislev with increasing our... Winds of Magic. I think it's Cathay, wasn't it, that had a buff to them. In we go. It's a valiant defeat, apparently, but we do have that Wrath of the Bear. We might take some casualties, but I think we can do it. A little look at the scout terrain here. There we go. 
That's good. Right, well. Marauder Champions will be pretty nasty. But I reckon we can do it. In we go. I'm going to try and keep most of my troops together because something I've learned from my Cathay campaign is that while these minor settlements often allow you to attack from multiple angles, sometimes full 360, not in this case because it backs onto kind of a mountainside. But yeah, just because you have multiple kind of approach uh, angles of attack, um, I feel like it doesn't always mean you should fully space out with all your force. It's good to pull the enemy apart, but sometimes that weakens your position too much. Okay, where are we here? So we're over this side to start with. And wiggle our way up there. Let's uh Chalwin's back, that's fine. Actually really interesting because when I've I've tested out this campaign uh, a few times just so I knew what I was doing. Never started me over this side before on the deployment. Obviously, we can just redeploy wherever we want to. Normally started me over here or over on the left. It's interesting, actually. I didn't actually realize there was a attack angle over this side. I've often started over here and used the forest as cover when I advance, but I actually quite like this. We can try and push up early and go for that main capture point there. And block them off on the rest of it. Yeah, let's let's push forward here and try and draw them to us. Use our ranged units to maximum effect. Hossar's got the same rate and they've got 140 range compared to the 160 of the Ice Guard. Okay. I'd have you three all together with Snow Leopard. Keep the cavalry hidden in there. I am the squall. So Elsa has Ice Shard. Line of sight for target. Magic missile and also Hailstorm. Let's do it. I go. Keep hidden up there. Take out those javelins. Then we've got missile superiority. We have a tower over there, so we'll need to try and take that out where we can. Get the cavalry back for the moment until we've got an opportunity to dive in and break them. They're holding back over there at the moment. Jabs. Can we do that much that we can't hit that tower yet from here? I wouldn't have thought. Oh, no, we can. Of the bear. Definitely want to take that tower out, though. It's going to cause a lot of damage to us. If I could draw those marauders away, then I'd charge in with the cavalry. Building up a tower over there. Right. Bring those marauders down. Bring the cavalry out. Taking out that tower. Move forward with the Cossars. Let's see if we can do a charge into the marauders. There. 
Push forward. Oh, yeah. They've left those guys exposed at the back. Go for the charge. That's the one. Knock them back. Charge on in. Power you up with the Wrath of the Bear. Blow them all down over there. Nice one, Cav. You can go capture those supply points behind them. Try and get a bombardment down there while they're all bunched up and being slowed. on a barricade over there. Leave them. Try and catch that. Draw some of their troops away. Nice. Nice guard. Don't, don't lock on there. Push forward that way. Go capture this point. Blast all these guys back. Back, bring her over to blast them as well. Have we put it back? She needs to be to fire that. Not too much closer, I don't think. I go. Be a magic missile on him instead. Bring down the Lord. Charge these guys. Have the armored Cossars keep fighting. Keep blasting them through there. Nice, we captured that one. Good. Bring her through. Drop that there. Push. No, actually, just reform. Looks like they're pulling back. Let's pull my Cossars back. They've got a chance to recover maybe a little bit. Nice. I think we've nearly shattered them. Cavalry pull back and then re-engage. Form up, form up, form up. Looking good. Blast them back there. There we go. Break him. Yeah, she's got him. Beautiful. Great result. Let's see if we can see a few more of her attack animations briefly. She's fallen over. It's getting really stuck trying to get through my Cossars. Repositioning. This was not meant to be. 
There we go. <laughs> uh, nice. Nice start. Right, that's enough. End the battle. Decisive victory. Smashed. Good stuff. <clears throat> Lenny kills the cavalry and the cost. The cost are really well. 174. Really impressed with that. Great result. Got a potion of strength as well. Not particularly useful for us. Uh, but that's okay. Noise. And we will the occupy. Good, good, good. More devotion. That Heimling's destroyed. May be liberated, but trouble stirs in this oblast. The Ropsmen clan have been subsumed by the great orthodoxy and resent your reign. Maintain control of uh, the following one provinces, either by direct ownership or through Vassimitri Ally, Eastern Oblast, which is this one. Cool, cool, cool. 5,000 gold to treasury and plus 50 devotion. So we need to go after the provincial of capital of Voltsgrad up here. Portchakova. Ropsman clans so are already at war with them. That's fine. What's their strength like? 23, 17. Okay. We really want to build up though for a few turns. None shall question me. Um, I wonder if it might be easier to just quickly force march back and then we can recruit more at Kislev because we can get the armored Kossars. Maybe we could then actually put, push up to Voltsgrad itself. Oh, and that's just a four slot provincial capital. I'm guessing that's because, yeah. Yeah, Prague is a single one. So it must be the same for Arengrad as well. Because you have these massive single slot, got 10 uh, single region provinces, cursed city. Um, provincial capitals of some of the surrounding regions are all just essentially a minor settlement. I'm assuming they still have minor, they can go up to tier five, but they've only got four slots. Interesting. Um, that would give walls, wouldn't it, as well? So, we've got the hallowed wood. We've got the farms there. Growth as well coming from that. Road, uh, roadhouse there. We've got... We can generate supports from the orthodoxy shrine. Interesting. Market square, so you can get some money through that. Okay. I think we'll probably go farms at the moment, because growth and recruitment and a little bit of income... Seems like a pretty good combo. All right, let's hope they. We can probably move straight onto that. I feel like grabbing a few more troops right now would be a good idea. We are both. Um, let's just as soon as we can get his cossars, let's throw in two cossars here because they're a single turn, and then I mean globally we could we could probably get those. Is it going to make that much difference running on back? We need a few turns to replenish anyway. We can afford it. Rather than pulling back, they can just throw in a couple more Kossars. Let's just do that for now, rather than going back to Kislev, I think. Because, yeah. We're going to have to then come back here. I think it's probably going to be faster doing it this way. It costs us a bit more, but... I think we can do it. We've gained two more skill points. Uh, so, let's just power up her, her magic a little bit. Death Frost uh, causes damage to combatant. Strong versus a character. That's good at sort of nuking down a single character. Frost Shield triggers when casting a spell. Armor and Missile Block chance. Uh, we go Frost Blades to power up. Our units, I think. Okay, let's go Frost Blades to start with. It Frost is Blades mine. quite useful. Elsa. We are going to give you... Uh, yeah, we'll upgrade your Hailstorm. I think I might take you out and use you on the campaign map, but the spells are quite nice as well. As long as we keep our Winds of Magic increasing, we should be fine. 
Um, so did we get another? We did from that battle. So okay, sieges do. I'll just do count just for all taking all these occupying settlements. Actually, right now we'll definitely want to switch on over to Urson. Actually, oh, and that's that's increased. Why is the cost increased? It was eighty-eight before, wasn't it? Well, the land has already been invoked. Oh, maybe I can't do another one even. Oh, this is done actually. Let's see. Defy chaos. Free your force, recruit twenty new units. Round total zero. Raise the standard and three thousand. Thank you. Who else are they at war with? They're just at war with us. Okay. Their main seat of power is going to be Prague, so we're just going to be dealing with cutting off their supplies, basically from their minor settlements. None shall question me. I think we'll give it another turn, and then we'll push on in. We won't recruit more global stuff and get a few more of these guys, though. Might as well pop them in, and then we'll push. Hopefully, we can reach it in a single turn. Um, let's see. Yeah, should be able to. Could try and steal technology with her. Yeah, let's go do it. Fail. Oh, nice. Capricorn movement range. Can I give that to the Tsarina instead, though? That'd be more useful for her to have it leading an army. Potion of strength. Yeah, you've got that equipped. It'll do for the moment. Frost Elsa made. did manage to gain a skill point, though, going through that. Biting wind. Expanding forward moving air effect. Ooh, wind spell, that's pretty cool. Line. Swifting. Just of true flight. I, I'm going to go for that because I saw that initially and was like, that sounds amazing. I despise traitors above all. Back into the army. They've got an army over there. Upgrading all of those. Another turn to the game. One point. The one needs to gain a bit more to upgrade the garrison. What? Okay, they're getting closer for wanting yes. to do trade. I mean, let's just see. Only we don't have enough God balance and offer. Judge it or no. Rats. The Empire. We still improving? Who calls? Yes. Die impaled on frozen barks. A little bit more growth from that research now as well. Saint uh, Nushka's finger bone. Oh. I have 3,000 income at the end of your turn. Okay. Replenishment hit points of combatants. That's pretty cool. The uh, holy finger bone. What I've always wanted. Only defense for Kossar units. Um, plus four. Management. Let's help them. Use this wisely, my people. Because we've got a lot of a fair few cossars. Oh, seriously, can't reach it in the same turn. That sucks. Follow the frost. To increase our movement. Dishonor you your bloodline. Uh, let's get let's get Come more channeling. Max out our I am Kislev's daughter. There we go. And now to 120. Nearly, nearly another level. Head at eight. That's fine. We can easily drop him down. Won't worry just yet. Early days. Devotion to the motherland is highly prized in your society. Strive in all you do to promote fidelity to your customs amongst your people. Right, so I've returned have at least 150 devotion. Okay. Devotion is, is still low. There's a medium chance. What? Uh oh. Rat row. What's, what counts as high devotion? Even falls to winter. 
can actually say. I'm assuming. I'm hoping over like 100 maybe. Jesus. Otherwise there'd be chaos. Jesus. The Tsarina. I do it for Kislev. Heroic victory, really? Unleash Kislev's wrath. Gifts of winter. Sure about that. It says medium casualty. I don't think it's going to be medium casualties. I mean, okay, they're heavily armored, but the number of troops you've got compared to what we've got. In we go. I'm not going to lose anyone here, but I don't want to then have to spend loads more turns waiting to replenish up before I can move again. We'll fight this one to try and take less casualties. Could probably afford on this one to split up our force on the two attack points just to divide up the enemy. Because not including their lord, they've only got seven units. I think that'll be a fair tactic. And we've built up onto the mountainside. Don't need channel magic when it's at 20. Push on up here. Push from that side and from over here. But we can uh, try. I was thinking we could try and hide in the forest and then push so they don't have anyone deployed over here. Don't know if that'll work. But they can put a barricade there, I think. Um, right, well, let's go for. Let's have all of these guys over that side. Can I be really sneaky? and hide them all on this little patch of forest. All of you hide in here and then we'll move through the trees, get real real close and strike. If I send those guys in here with the armoured Cossars. We'd hold them back in these forests and just move forward. Yeah, have them all there. And I think we'll have the rest of us. We'll still have a main bulk force over here because if we are going to pull all of their forces over here we are going to need our forces and strength oh yeah keep the snow leopard with them start they popped a tower up there doesn't look they deployed anyone over here no good 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 Perfect, which means you lot can rush on through and grab the points from behind them. Forward. Answers go there. Do it. Pick them nicely. Nice uh, farm on the hillside there. Take out their points from behind and weaken them so they can't generate more supplies to hold up here. Yeah, bring down those missile units. And then we'll focus on bringing that tower down. You're going to start pulling back any of their troops for the other side. None yet. That's all good. I brought down the barricade as well. Absolutely rinse them. They are gone. Absolutely deleted. Move on the armored Cossars. Right there, trying to run away. Don't know my other troops are coming. The Patriarch over here is pulling back. Oh, 
off the armored cossars if you can. got in don't hang about they're putting cavalry back over here getting these guys up here you guys over there Push, 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 push. Gun them down. Take them down. Dervishes are fairly weak. It should go down to them. Power up though, make it so that tower's captured. Focus on them over there, please. Turn them around. Capture the other one. Noise. Go, go, go. Bring you guys forward. Avoid that tower constantly shooting you. How is this a period victory? Or, yeah. Or like, whatever. They've got the AI kind of balance set to at the moment. They need to tweak that. The order resolves. that over there. How you guys doing? You're fine. Fire, 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 fire. Just that Lord now. He's going to go down. His unbreakable's popped. Up the ice guard. Make me more devastating. Charge into him. They finally gone. Go grab that point, please. He's not making it out alive. Any moment now. They will be broken. There we go. Boom. Thank you very much. Probably push on Fort Chikova to the east, and then we can swing up towards Holtzgrad. Finish off the province. Gain two supporters. Occupy. The motherland grows. I don't know. Did we lose two? Yeah, that was lose two, I think, actually. 
Why did we lose two for that one? Hmm. Don't know. We'll find out. Oh, hello. What's this? Fort Jakova Camp. Ooh. Oak Kingdoms. Rock Skulls. We'll be facing you then. Ah, when this camp's available, we can hire um, Ogre Mercenaries. That's how it works now. But yeah, when you see an Ogre Kingdoms faction encamped in territory, you can recruit some. I'm almost tempted to get a unit of ogres. Oh, we can only have one in the army anyway. Yeah, let's do it. Screw it. Let's have some ogre mercenaries. Why not? What have we gained here? Devotion, the Orthodox Shrine, Control, Corruption. Um, I mean, it's not the best thing right now. What did we lose to? Fight. Oh, because we fought Kislev. That makes sense. Ah, uh, if I get the motherland too, but we fought them, so we lose two. So we kept it balanced. Okay. Yeah, we really need to go over to Urson. That's going to lower our support. That's not my fault. This is how the game started. Dang it. Okay, so we got to try and deal with them through diplomacy. Right. Nurse Bit told us how he's getting his supporters right now. But yeah, definitely... Looking at it, with the number of settlements you're going to take early on, you're going to want to go for Urson probably to jump ahead with supporters most uh, effectively then, I guess. We switch to that if we're going to keep on grabbing bits, but it depends how much more devotion we can get. How do these ogres that we've just discovered feel about us? The boss. Actually improving a little bit. Reckon I'll take your head off in one. But we could also go and take them out to generate us some My plan. more devotion. Mistress of ice, none shall question. Let's go for actually no, not death frost. I'm gonna go for frost shield then death frost. A gift from Kislev's great gods. Elsa, we will go for um fighting wind. I want to see that wind spell in action, please. Pledge your obedience. Let me recruit, recruit one more unit. We need to wait here for a turn anyway. Good to go for a Kossar. They're at full strength. Let's do it. No that mission isn't actually to... Yeah, it's to recruit 20 new units, not to have a full 20 stack Born army. Might as well at the moment. We can't do anything here until Kislev upgrades again. Uh, with its growth. First level, you've got that one. I guess it's whether or not we keep the Orthodoxy Shrine here. Probably should switch it over to another farm for some income early on. I don't think, again, really don't need to worry about supporters this early on. We need to keep an eye on it because we don't want him to get a massive lead, but we can always drop him down. Um, cut their supporters by 50. Then it is a 20 cooldown. But we need to keep an eye on it, but I don't think we need to panic about it. So I think it might be better to switch that orthodoxy shrine to something else. But you guys weigh in. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. We'll pick things up from here. Probably going ending, ending the turn unless we decide to get rid of that shrine at the start of the next episode. Until then, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Take part into the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet and Overclocks UK. Till the next one, ciao for now.